Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for another time to look into your word. Thank for the grace to be alive. Thank for the grace to not only be alive, but to be chasing after you. It's a privilege. It is a product of your work in our spirits. It's a product of your work, your work in our lives. There is a thousand and one places we can be at this moment. There is a thousand and one things we can be doing. But through your work in our hearts, you have prepared us to hear from you at such a time as this. Some of us have had to leave fun, leave the TV, leave the comfort of our bed to hear this. I pray that the entrance of your word will give light and will give understanding to every one of us in the name of Jesus. Let your word come with power. Let your word come with grace. Let your word come with your spirit. Paul said, I plant Apollo's water, but it is the spirit that gives increase. I decree that the seed that is sown in the hearts of men let it produce results in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Grant me the words, grant me the auction to explain, to provide understanding. The Bible says when the seed was sown, those that fall on the wayside, they are those who hear but do not understand. I decree, let there be understanding, let there be revelation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So you are welcome once again to our SGS teachings. Um, last week we talked about long life. I would not want to repeat myself. I can preach all of that all over again. How that God promised every one of us long life. And it is important that we enjoy that benefit. Under God, we are not permitted to die with, before our time. And when we say don't die before your time, we don't mean you die at 30 and then that is your time. No, no, no. no. Okay? We are saying that God promised us a good old age. That's what God promised us. And we also showed us from that teaching that as a child of God, you are entitled to know when you will die. And that is something we don't teach. Most people don't know that it's possible. Last week I showed from scripture to scripture to scripture, showing us examples of children of God, believers, who knew when they were going to die. Even Samson chose when he was going to die. He said, let me die with my enemies and he died. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, without committing suicide like uh, Samson, uh, you can know when you are going to die as a child of God. You are not permitted to die carelessly die through accident, die through stray bullet, or, you know, die through, through, you know, unexpected sickness, heart attack, or stroke. It's not yours as a child of God. Hallelujah. Please get the teaching. You get the full, uh, you, you get empowered to live long. That's just it. It's not a teaching. It's an empowering to live long. It's a charm. It's a long life charm. <laughs> I have it too. I am already equipped with that, uh, with the charm. So I'm not afraid of death and I know I can't die before my time. Hallelujah. So equip yourself with that. The Bible says that um, he said, um, he said that, the, that the working of our faith may become effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is at work in us in Christ Jesus. So, okay, let me just move on so that I don't have to preach that all over again. Praise the Lord. So today I'll be talking about abundant living. Abundant living what does abundance mean quickly this is something i rarely do but uh, I, I would like to go to dictionary to check this look this one up because when i checked it I, I i loved what i saw abundance here means an overflowing this is uh this is oxford dictionary if i'm correct oxford is it oxford okay I'm not sure if it's Oxford now. I know it's one very one of the dictionary on my phone, which is very, very comes in handy. Hallelujah. So it said it's an overflowing fullness of ample sufficiency, profusion, copious supply, superfluity, plentifulness. 
That's that's uh, abundance. I love the word overflowing fullness. Overflowing fullness. That's what abundance means. So when we say abundant living, we are saying that under God, you are entitled to have an overflowing supply. Hallelujah. And I can tell you, many people do not live like this. In fact, as a matter of fact, majority of believers today, they don't live in abundance. In fact, they don't believe in abundance. You'll be surprised that those you think are meant to be richer than you, have more money than you, many of them, they are still not living in abundance. Abundance simply means you have more than enough. Abundance simply means you have more than you need. I love um, one of the, okay, let's, let me see if I can check that scripture. Um, what's the name now? Psalm 23. Psalm 23 verse, um, verse 1. There is a version I love so much. That version says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have more than I need. One of those versions. If God is your shepherd, under God, you are meant to have more than you need. He said, it makes me to lie down in a green pasture, you know, as a sheep. In a place where there is abundance of food. Hallelujah. He says, uh, he anointed my head with oil. He said, my cup runs over. And you see, the, 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 the sentence, my cup runs over, is, uh, is, uh, is from the culture of the Jews. If you visit a Jewish man, and the man wants to show you that, he wants to prove to you, that there is enough drink for you. So it's going to take a jug where we have the wine or the pot where we have the wine and pour into your cup. After the cup is full, it will keep on pouring. It will ensure that there is overflow before it stops. It is a way to communicate to your guest that I, there is too much in supply for you. You are in today for maximum enjoyment. So, the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I have all that I want. I have all that I need. And I still have more than enough. But sadly, many believers do not live like this. And I am not telling you about being wealthy. There are a lot of wealthy people who, by God's standard, they are still poor. Because in the Bible... A, a rich man is not a wealthy person. You see, when we talk of physical wealth in the Bible, not, um, not, uh, not spiritual riches now. When we talk of physical riches now in God, the Bible defines a physically rich person as somebody who has more than they need. And you see, irrespective of the level you may be, irrespective of your income, I make both to tell you that under God, you can have more than you need. Hallelujah. Paul, even though he, he didn't have a house, he didn't have many things that people have, Paul said, I am full and abound. <laughs> He said, through the gift you gave to me, he said, I have more than enough. That would afraid me I would have shown us that. Hallelujah. Through your gifts, I, I, I have become, I, 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 have, I am living in abundance. Hallelujah. That's what Paul said. Let me see if I can show us that. Glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Under God, we have that ability 
that irrespective of the level you may be, irrespective, there is you have the ability to I've seen it, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, verse 18. He said, But I have all. This is Paul. You know Paul now. You know, Paul wasn't a rich man in quote from, from man's perspective. And if you think he's speaking spiritually, he's not. See what he said. If I read from verse 16, he said, For even in Thessal Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Verse 17, he said, Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. He said, I didn't ask you to give to me. He said, but you who gave to me generously. See what he said in verse 18 now. He said, but I have all and abound. <laughs> you know what abound means? It means I have all increasingly. I am full. Hey, it's powerful. Let's say that in other, in other versions. Philippians 4, verse 18. Very powerful. Hallelujah. I didn't plan to to go there today, but it looks like God wants you to hear that. Paul, he said, even though we know, some of you have, you, you know Paul, you know that by humanly speaking, he's not a worldly person. I wonder if he has up to five or six change of clothes. Because at the time, he had to send to Timothy. He said, bring me my cover clothes, the one I left. The one I left with you. Please, he said, don't forget to bring it for me. But because of his revelation, because of his understanding, because of how he lives, because of his work with God, Paul said, I am full. I have more than I need. Say, I have all and abound and I am full. How many of us today can testify like that, that I have and I am full? How many of us? How many of us can say that? <laughs> some, some years ago, uh, one of my, you know, a senior colleague, it, I think it's in the US or UK or there about, so he sent me a message. He was, he was just chatting with me. He said, how are you doing? I said, fine. He said, now is Nigeria. How is things with you? How is work? I said, very fine. God is blessing me. Things are going tremendously. You know, God, has, God is good to me. And the man said, I am the very first person that he has ever spoken to that will give that kind of response since he has been chatting Nigerians or people living in Nigeria. He said, there is nobody. <laughs> this was a time I didn't have a car. I was not, I didn't even have a rented apartment. I wasn't, I wasn't living in a rented apartment. I was living with a guardian. But you see, even though I was living there, my brother and my sister, I was rich, I was full. Hallelujah. Let's talk, let me load other versions for you. Let me try and use my other Bible here. You know, you can take advantage of all these versions. They have a way of communicating better to us. Um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Let me look at, and let me look at um, God's word first. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 18. Hallelujah. Aha, see what God's word says. God's word says, you have paid me in full. I don't know how much they gave to him. So don't go thinking maybe they gave him. So No, no, no. There is nothing they can give you, humanly speaking, <laughs> that humanly speaking make you feel like, no, 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 no. I have too much already. While we were doing economics, we were taught that human needs are insatiable. And today, human beings, they are consistently in a state of wanting more and more and more. There is nobody you give to and they will tell you that we have, we have enough. We are not wired that way. Just today, you know, um, let me just share this. This is something that happened just today. A beloved man of God who is a very who, uh, supports the ministry very well. You know, he wrote us and he said he would like to support a particular project we wanted to do. And we had to tell him, Ma, thank you very much. 
You have given us so much already. This project we want to do, we have sufficient to do it. There are many of us that we never see something like that. It's always about bring, 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 bring. We have a poverty mentality. So today, I'm going to show you how to live abundantly, irrespective of the level you are. Hallelujah. God's word, Philippians 4.18. He said, you have paid me in full and I have more than enough. Oh, yeah. I have, he doesn't have a, have a house. He didn't have houses full of gold. <laughs> he didn't have uh, money in his bank account. He said, I have more than enough. Hallelujah. That's how to live. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me check ESV here. Philippians 4, 18, ESV. He said, I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied. You see that? Let me look for NLV here. NLV here. Hope you are getting blessed. Hi. NLT. Okay, NLT. He said, at the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gift you sent to me. Hallelujah. So in case you are planning to give me more, no, 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 don't bother anymore. The what you have given to me, I, as in, I have so much already. How many of us can say that to anybody? And you mean it? It's not a, it's not a, it's not a form of courtesy. You know, like, ah, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. When your mind, you, you are just trying to form umbility. When we're in school, we call it any fake community. We call it umbility. <laughs> and in your mind, they say, "Sir, come and eat that. Don't worry, don't worry." Ah, what's your number? And they say, "Like you are very, very hungry." <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're talking of fake umbility or fake humility. Will you truly mean it? I'm richly supplied. I'm blessed. Kai, look at that woman. There's a woman in the, in the book of First Kings or Jeremiah or Second Kings. That woman that uh, came to that that was feeling like Elijah every time. I think, I don't know if she's Elijah or Elijah. I'm not sure now. But then Elijah said, "Woman, what do you need, Kai? What do you want me to do for you?" The woman said, "No." I don't need anything. Some of us don't believe that you can get to that level where you don't need anything. And like I told, like I told you, it is not a function of how much you have. Hallelujah. <laughs> People can have much more than you and they will be poorer than you and you that you are any so little. You are living in abundance. So today I'm not teaching you how to get gain wealth. No, 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 no. I'm teaching you that no matter the level you are, whether your income is 20,000 or 50,000 or 500,000 annually or whatever, irrespective of your income, you can live in abundance. Hallelujah. And the lecturer said, tell me, what do you want? You have been good to us. How can we repay you? The woman said, no, there is nothing I need from you now. Paul said, uh, Elijah said, I, I can speak to the king on your behalf. Tell me what you need. I will tell the king and it will be done for you. The woman said, no, 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 I don't want anything. <laughs> she is so content that even the fact that she does not have a child does not bother her. Then the servant of the man of God said, ah, um, I think it's Gaius and Elisha now. He said, ah, as I'm, she will be coming here. I've never seen a child in this household. She has come to a level of contentment <laughs> where she needs nothing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you see, God's design for every single one of us is to live in abundance. This is how I live. This is how I've been living for all my life. Ever since I understood that God is my provider, and I understood the principle of abundance, that God wants you to live in abundance. 
I have lived in abundance all my life. Immediately I graduated from school because I was privileged to do, because of the nature of my course, I was privileged to do my master's immediately after my, uh, my first degree without going for service. Nigerians will be able to relate with that. Immediately I finished my first degree, I made up my mind that if God is my provider, I must begin to see it. That's so why I was in school. My parents were sending me money, sending me money. And I was, you know, living fairly big. <laughs> Hallelujah. I live in abundance. Of, people know, even when I was a student in school, my church members know, because I was president when I was in school, they know that if you come to the pocket, if you come to the purse of the president, you can always see 100 never to pick, 50 never to pick. Hallelujah. So when I finished school, I, I said, okay, my parents have been, they've been, they've been, they've been doing this all along. Now, because even when I was in school, I remember one day I was preaching to some, some sort of people and I told them, I said, I have a very strong revelation of God's um, provision in my life that if my parents go poor today and they can't send, send me money again, I said, you'll be surprised that I will live bigger than I'm living already. You know why? I have an understanding of abundance. Hallelujah. So when I finished school, I, I made up my mind myself that I will not ask a cobble from home again. Myself. So I will never ask for a cobble from home. So during my master's, I trusted God to supply my needs. Of course, I was doing some things and I trusted God to bless the work of my hand and to ensure that I said I will not ask any cover from home again. When I got to the, when, eventually when I went, went for service, I'm just sharing some personal things with you so that you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. That if I, God is not a respecter of persons. If it is possible with me, it is possible with you also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I got to my service year and uh, I started serving, I made up my mind that I will not touch my allowance. So for about seven straight months, I didn't touch my allowance. I said, God, if you will feed me after service year, let me start seeing it during service. I will not depend on government allowance. Hallelujah. And those of you that know family house, I lived in any CA family house, we were to pay 4,000 naira for uh, daily upkeep. I was paying it without touching my allowance. Um, I think all members of the family house, I don't know if they do that now. They expect you to, you know, they expect you to tight. Their tight was meant to be 2,000, I was paying 4,000. So I was making that 8,000 dollar payment on a monthly basis, apart from transport and several other expenses, making that payment every month without touching my allowance. And I proved it. So by the time I finished from service, uh, there, was, there was no doubt. I can tell you a lot of other things. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's just to show you that it is possible to live in abundance. It's not peculiar to me or the nature of my job. Every one of us. Hallelujah. So when God blesses you, um, God's kind of blessing comes with joy, comes with peace, no struggle, no begging, no borrowing, then gives you good health and gives you a fulfilled life. So when God considers you a person who is living abundantly and who is living um, prosperously, God expects, doesn't always mean that you are wealthy. And you see, me, I will not deceive you. Every one of us cannot be Elon Musk. Let's be realistic. <laughs> All of us will not be Bill Gates. That is the fact. I will not join pastors to tell you that you can become a billionaire under 24 hours. Now, miracles happen. And there are exceptions. And I tell you there are exceptions. There are exceptions, but I tell you, Every one of us should not be billionaire. Not all of us have the capacity to make billions. Even millions, some of us don't have that capacity. Even if a miracle should happen now, and someone gives you 50 million US dollars, eh? if you don't have the capacity to deal with billions, oh, under five years, you'll be surprised you, 
the money will go back to where it came from. <laughs> so you see, I'm not teaching you today how to become wealthy. But I want to teach you that irrespective of your level of income, you can still live abundantly. You can still, you will still be able to say like Paul, that I have all I need. I am richly supplied. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 is the definition of a rich man in that scripture. The Bible says, because you say I am rich and increase with goods and I have need of nothing. So you see, a rich man is a person whose needs are met, who has no need. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, why is God interested in us having abundance? Why? Why is God interested in us having abundance? God told Abraham, he said, I will bless you and make you a blessing. Not only will I bless you, but the end of me making you a, ble making you a blessing, ah, of blessing you, is to make you a blessing. So you see, today I'll be sharing with you just two sides. How to enjoy abundance by faith and then to enjoy abundance by wisdom. Okay, under the wisdom part, I'll share with you about 10 ways to enjoy abundance by God's wisdom. Okay? But first, quickly now, because of time, I'll go to how to enjoy abundance by faith. Hallelujah. God is interested in supplying all your needs. Okay? And he's interested in supplying more than you need. Why? Because he wants to ensure you become a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Let's quickly talk about how to enjoy abundance by faith. There's a scripture I will just quickly read. And then we take it off from there. Matthew chapter 6. It's a scripture you need to know. When I meditated on this scripture, it changed my life completely. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6. I read from verse 25. It says, Take no thought for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or for your body, what you will wear. It's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. So don't. Why should you be bothered? Every time you are worried about what to eat, how to parent, how to do A, B, C, and D, the Bible says you are, you are acting against your faith. You are demonstrating that you are your provider. You are demonstrating that you are your provider, your provider. See, I have a son. I have a daughter too, by God's grace. And you see, even though they eat on daily basis, they don't care where the money is coming from. I'm the one that know that uh, that fuel has fuel price has increased. <laughs> they are not bothered. I'm the one that know that rice has increased in the market. It's not their business. <laughs> All that matters to them is that I know <laughs> that tomorrow's rice is going to come. So when you quit being your own provider, when you quit being your own supplier, when you quit being your own father. You stop worrying. Every time you worry, all you are saying is God is not my father. I am my own father. I am my own provider. I am my own supplier. I am my own El Shaddai. Hallelujah. To so never worry. You must know how to rest. Please, if you need to read the scripture every day till it registers on your heart, please do it. Last week we talked about meditation uh, during the uh, Wednesday teachings. And uh, ne next Wednesday we will continue again. One of the ways to meditate on scripture is to cram them and begin to repeat them again and again and again and again and again and again. You repeat it until it becomes a part of you, until the world becomes flesh and dwells with you. Hallelujah. 
when I study this scripture, it, it changed my life. I, I am confident that I cannot lack. In my, it is impossible I can't lack. No, 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 no. I have moved past the stage of lacking. I'm not saying, <laughs> hallelujah. You know, um, Bishop David Oedepo, he said he woke up one day and a, a scripture flashed in his heart and from that moment on, he said, I can never be poor in my life. It's a revelation. No? You know, last week I told you, there is a boasting in God. <laughs> this is an form of boasting. I cannot be poor. I can never lack. If it remains one means for me to lack, higher, heaven will open. God will raise stones and make stones into money if that is what it will take to meet my needs. Hallelujah. So for you to live in abundance, you must understand that you are not your own provider. Verse 26, beyond the fast of the air, they sow not, they don't reap, they don't gather into banks, they don't have a bank account, they don't have a farmland where they farm, they don't have a business, they are not putting on time to go to work every day, they are not waking up at 8 o'clock to go and work, they are not waiting on the salary, they are not waiting on, on the government to take care of them. That's what the Bible says. Say yet, <laughs> these seemingly jobless birds of the sky, as many as they are, says, yet your heavenly father feeds them. I'm reading the Bible. This is Matthew 6, verse 26. Now, the day I read this, it's, I don't know what it did to me. I pray that that revelation will be done on your heart also in the name of Jesus. You see? I was like, wait to Jesus, did you mean what you just said? You are saying that those breasts of the sky, those billions of breasts in the sky, I don't know if you have seen bats migrate before. Ah, They migrate in millions. Yeah. Those, those small birds, those seemingly small birds, that today they are, tomorrow they are not. Seemingly insignificant. The Bible says, yet, my own heavenly father feeds them. I used to think that they are fed by the cycle of life. I used to think that they are just a part of the food chain. That, you know, God has already designed, designed a system whereby they are fed. But Jesus said, no. He said, your heavenly father. Hmm? He feeds them. So if my heavenly father is paying attention to feeding breasts of the sky, Haba, how about me that I'm his own son? Ah, no, I know, I know how I treat my own son. I know. I know the priority I give his needs. He's still a young boy today. Still very young. Never has he asked me for a school fees before, before I pay. Never. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The mom and I, now they are in school. They are, we are planning, how, how do we buy them a Christmas clothes? How do we do this for them? They don't need to ask. So they, don't even know they, they don't even know they need Christmas clothes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope God is speaking to you. Even the things you don't know you need, your Heavenly Father is committed to giving you. He said, are you not more better than the birds? See the next verse. Let me just go to verse 28. He said, and why do you think of what to wear? He said, consider the needs of the field. They don't grow, they don't toil, they don't spin, they don't walk. He said, and yet, Solomon in all his beauty, as beautiful as Solomon dressed, he said, he's not as beautiful as the lily of the field. <laughs> See what God, see what Jesus said in verse 30. He said, wherefore, if God, God, so close the grass of the field, this should make you think. You mean God? 
God can be so concerned about the tiniest grass of the field. My own God, my own Father, can be so conscious to take care of the lilies of the field and to clothe them. How much more me? How much more me? Why will I continue to starve and hunger? And my father is, is providing clothes for grass of the field that today they are, tomorrow they are not. That's what he said. Say, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Hallelujah. Your father, my father, except you are not his son. You know the funny thing? You know the prodigal son? He said, even the higher servants in my father's house, they are enjoying more than me now, straight away. He said, no, I will go back home. If God can pay attention to grass, you know what grass is? Grass you cut carelessly. Flowers that bloom in the morning and by night they are gone. The Bible says God is the one that clothes them. They are not clothed by accident. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The Bible says, that's why he said, it is the Gentiles that need to be worried about these things. That's what it says in verse, verse 32. Don't be worried. You have a father. It's the orphans. Orphans can be bothered. Orphans can be bothered, but you, you are a child of a father. Don't seek him. Seek him first. Make him priority. He will ensure every other thing. I tell you, that's how I live. Hallelujah. Even when I did, when I, my, my entire, as in if you add everything I have together, it's not up to 100,000. My brother and my sister, I enjoyed abundance. Psalm 34, verse 10, it says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. These are scriptures you should know like the back of your hand. Every time the devil tells you where will the next food come, come from, hey, <laughs> tell the devil, I have a father. I have a father. That is not my business. That is not my concern. That is not my headache. I have a father. You see, one of the biggest mistakes we make is that we think, hey, is that we think that we need to work before we eat. It is one of the biggest misunderstanding and misconception of the word of God. Of course, unbelievers can believe that because they are laborers. But for a child of God, I have a child. He does not need to work before he eats. He didn't need to. Because he's my son. He's my son. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's how it is. You see, it was after God caused man that man began to work before he eats. I hope you know that. Read Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, because you have done this, I will send you out of the garden. And now out of the sweat of your, you will have to sweat now. You will have to labor before you eat. In the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, God provided all the food Adam we eat before he put him in the garden. After God now put him in the garden, now told him, okay, now that there is food for you to eat, now walk. So, in God's kingdom, we walk because we eat. We don't eat. Uh, we don't walk so that we can eat. How do you get that? As God's children, we walk because we eat, because there is food. Our response to walk is is our response to the food provided, to the garden God has placed us, to the hidden God has given us, is to, you know, to now begin to work and maintain the garden. We are not meant to go and create our own garden and begin to plant. That is a cause. I pray the Holy Spirit will explain this to you. Get out of the work-mindedness. Get out of it. 
That's why some of you, you will not put your best into your work because you say, how much are they paying yourself? Because you think that you are working for the money. Ah. A child of God does not work for money. If you are working for money, you will have wasted your life, sir. Because you know how much time we devote to, to work. From Monday to some of us even work on Saturday, from Monday to Friday. Yeah? To even prepare to go and work, you are up, you are already up by 5 a.m. Some of you get back home by 11 p.m. And you want to waste all that time. That's about that. That's about 18 hours. On the road, at work, everything. By the time you add everything together, you are, you are spending 18 solid hours every single day to earn money. Don't cheat yourself. Oh. Don't be foolish. Wake up. When you have this understanding, you will not work for money one more day in your life. Hmm. You will wake up on daily basis with a purpose. And that purpose is not to make money today. That purpose is to serve. Is to be a blessing. Be a blessing to my customers. Be a blessing to my boss. Be a blessing to my company. Be a blessing. Ah, earn more money so that I can be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So when you have this understanding, your attitude towards work will be different. Please, don't waste your life. Don't waste 18 hours of your day. And you're laboring for money. Haba. Money that we, you should not even go past this world. Even if you are laboring to not make money, the end product of that you're making money should be different. Because you see, you know that even if I don't work, God will supply my needs. See, let me tell you, if you are fired from your workplace, don't fret yourself. Lean back. On your everlasting arm, I tell you, without your work, your father can feed you. I tell you that. Some of you, God is already showing you. You've been out of job for a while now, and you are you are, you, can't, you don't understand how you have been eating. Even you don't know where the money is coming from. <laughs> so these pastors, they have come again. Abby. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is what the word of God says. God can feed you without working. Your work is not meant to be how you eat. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't worry, I will explain further as we go. Do you understand? When you have this understanding, you will not work for money one more day in your life. Your working will be purposeful. Let's read 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. In fact, this is uh, the very anchor scripture where this abundance matter stemmed from. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. Hallelujah. It says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have always having sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Now, KJV just did not allow us to understand this very well. Let's read this in other versions. Hallelujah. Please follow me. Let's read this in, um, let's read it in NIV. Are you with me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say, and God is able to bless you abundantly. You see that? Your father is equipped. To bless you abundantly. So that in all things, Kai, at all times, having all that you need, you will be able to abound in every good work. That should change your life. I will read again. God is able to bless you abundantly hmm? so that in all things. How many things? How many things? In all things. How many times? At all times. Irrespective of the season. 
during the COVID nineteen, I was feeding. I, I was we live practically living. Uh, you know, just me, my wife, and you know a child before the COVID nineteen. And when COVID nineteen came, some of our family friends they started living with us. So our income almost times three. Our expenses, I mean, times three during COVID nineteen. During lockdown. But at the time, one of them said, oh, please, KK, oh, please, I, I like to go. I want to go. I know you are spending so much. I said, oh, look at you. <laughs> look at you. We have a father. He's the provider. In every season, we were still eating and drinking normally. You know, COVID-19. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In every season, at all times, Always having abundance. During COVID 19, we were still giving to a lot of people. Abundance mentality. Now you see, it says, so that in all things and at all times, you are having all that you need, you will be able to abound in every goal. So, one of the reasons God wants you to have more than you need. It's not so that you can consume it on your own loss. It's so that you can be a blessing. A blessing to people around you. A blessing to the work of God. God wants you to be a blessing to people around you. God, God expects that the prayer points of many people, it will stop on your table. Things that people are bothering God for. I say, God, please, I just need 5,000. I don't need 5,000. Somebody calls you. And that prayer point stops there. You have become an extension of the hand of God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. That's how you live. As a student, I think I was doing my master's then. How much was I getting? But I was still deliberate about being a blessing to people. As soon as I was, I bought food for somebody as a student. Not because I don't have things to do with money. We talk about, um, we talk about uh, abundance through God's wisdom. Next week, not this week. Because time is fast spent. Hallelujah. But you see, ah, uh, when you have this abundance mentality, you will, you, will, you will not be eating with all your five fingers, all your ten fingers. You will ensure you always have something left in case somebody is in need. And you see, when you have that mentality, instead of emergency, some, ah, yeah, hey, God of mercy, there are some people, they don't have so much, and they will still be getting into troubles that will take money from them. It's, it's, that's not a blessing. No? They are not earning so much and they are still getting, they are still nursing a sickness that will be eating the little that they have. That's not, the, that's not God's blessing. No? When you have abundance mentality, we know the money that I have is not for me alone. It's not for me, my family, and I. I am meant to have enough to bless others. God will remove emergencies from your life. Hallelujah. Let's read another version. 7 Corinthians 9 verse 8. It says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need <laughs> and plenty left over to share with others. Hey, Jesus. I don't know if this scripture is done. I don't know if he's doing the same thing to you as he's doing to me. Let me read it again. This is NLT. It says, how do you know that NLT is a very powerful Bible? It was translated by 90 scholars. Or just about 90 uh, Hebrew and Greek scholars. So it's one of the, it's a Bible that is very close to the original. Very wonderful book. And uh, very wonderful Bible. And uh, they, it communicates to you in a way you can understand. So it's a, it's a very good Bible I recommend. Now see what it says. It says, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Hallelujah. 
So God expects that your life is so blessed that your need is a walk over. Then you have, still have enough. You still have enough to be a blessing to other people. You don't have a mentality of me, me. Many of us, we have a me, me, me mentality. Me first, me first, me first, me first. It's about me, about me, about me. When you live like that, if you are not careful, you, 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 you may even run into debt. You will not have an abundance mentality. But when you have an abundance mindset, when you know that God supplies my needs, not only for me to enrich myself, but to be a blessing to other people, I tell you, God's graces, God's provision will be flowing through your hands because you are a channel, not a bucket. Hallelujah. Let's take another version. Let me, let's take... Um, Let's take Amplified. It says, And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessings to come in abundance to you, so that you may always, under all circumstances, Kai, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything. Being completely self-sufficient in him and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. You see that? There are some of you, if pastor ever mentions that, hey, we have a building project, it will be grumbling. This pastor, they have come again. They have come again. <laughs> eh? Ah, we need to give to support that they've come again. Ah, we want to buy, do, we want to get involved in a bus project. They have come again. Ah, the church sound. We need to, they have come again. Every time you see a needy person, you want to dodge. You live like that. And there are some of you, you are saying, oh, and, ah, when, when God bless you very well, so that I'll be able to bless others. Please listen. Listen very carefully. Hmm? <laughs> Hallelujah. That one talent you are holding, start using it to bless others. How do you tell people? You see? Hmm. Who do you want to please? Do you intend to please man or you intend to please God? If you intend to please God, you don't need millions to be a blessing to others. If you want your giving to count in the face of God, but you don't need to have so much to give. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much is expected. To whom little is given, little is expected. It is human beings that count. You see, if I give you 1,000 now, you may not say, much, you may not say thank you much. But in the face of God, God may say, wow, you have done well. Because you see, God's measurement of a giver is not how much you give, but how much you have left after you have given. That's how God measures giving. So you can give a million naira. And God says, what are you giving? Because God knows you have 10 billion. 10 billion. And if somebody gives, you know, somebody gives like 10 million to church, ah, from the pastor. <laughs> I want to call him and say, thank you, sir. Ah, thank you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the face of man, I can say thank you. Of course, I want to be sure where we hope uh, you didn't steal it. Hope it's not, uh, you know, hope I know the work you are doing. That's in the face of man. You can pick 50 million and use it to build uh, a house for somebody or build a maternity for a society. And everybody say, wow, wow, great man, great man. But God does not look that way. God says, you have given 50 million, but how much do you have? Tell you that you have 1 billion. You have 50 billion. You give 50 million. And you are feeling like you've not even given 10%. But there is this widow. 
all she has, all she has is 500 naira. 500 naira. And she picked the 500 naira, went to the offering basket and dropped it. And God said, hey, everybody, all the angels, come and see you. Somebody has done something incredulous. Because others, I know how much I gave them, and I know how much they give. But this woman, out of the little I gave her, she gave everything. Ah, this one is the best. So to be a blessed to others, you don't need to become a billionaire. Don't wait till you become a millionaire. That's money you have in your hands now. Don't eat up everything. Save some. To be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Let me look for another version. Um, on that again, before we, we are done. Okay, let me read. Let me, I will read God's word and read good news. And then we we'll proceed just before we pray. He says, God's word says, besides, God will give you his constantly overflowing kindness. I have different versions here. I'm just picking the ones I feel me communicate better to you. He said, God will give you his constantly overflowing kindness. You see? God is committed to that. Say then when you always have everything you need, you can do more and more good things. So you see, the blessedness I'm talking about is not a blessedness to enrich yourself. But it's a blessedness where you have all you need and you have enough, more than enough, to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Good news. He says, and God is able to give you more than you need. You see that? Give you abundance so that you will always have all you need for yourselves and more than enough for every good cause. So at every point T of a child of God, you must always have left over to be a blessing. When you have this kind of mindset, I'll, 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 next week we, we continue from here. I will show you the, the, the attitude people display that prevents them from, having, from living in abundance. People who are waiting until they get there before they, they enjoy abundance. I tell you, I have been rich all my life. I have enjoyed abundance. I'm not, I'm not trying to boast. I'm telling you how I have lived. I do that because I, I have an understanding of abundance. But when I was on, <laughs> hallelujah, I remember during service here, somebody came to me and said, I should borrow him 500,000. And I was like, true. <laughs> I'm like, where do, you want, <laughs> where do you want me to get this from? Because he saw the way I lived. He saw the way I give. He, in his mind, he calculated that this guy, with the way he gives, I'm sure he has uh, 1 million. He, uh, he must have like 5 million somewhere. Hallelujah. That's how you should live. You live in a way to be a blessing to people. I, I think there was, there was a year like that. My wife and I, we just looked at our life. We were like, ah, God has blessed us. At this point now, we can go ahead and start building ourselves a house. And we are like, but why should we start building houses when there are people around us who are in need? So we said, this year, we will not do anything on building. We will not even buy a land to build a house. This year, we will look for families to give money to 50,000, 100,000. We said, picking up families and giving to them. It's a mindset. <laughs> Somebody will see us giving like that. I feel like, oh, these people, they are millionaires. They, they have billions kept somewhere. It's not true. It's a mindset of abundance. Because we are plugged into a source, Aya, a source that's never dry. We know that even there is he, the Bible says, there is he that, uh, that scatter it and gets increased. Hallelujah. You see, there is a principle of earning and making money in the physical world. And it works. 
That's why people are against church people. They say, you people are just carrying Bible. Yes, you are poor. You are, you are praying for, for prosperity. Look at Elon Musk. He's, he's even an atheist. Dan Gote is even a Muslim. Bill Gates is an atheist. The richest people in the world, they don't know God or care about God. And you people will be praying for it. You people are fools. You are, you are foolish. You don't have sense. You are religious. You are, you are by gods. You are fanatics. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, what they don't understand is that the way, yeah, yeah, the way we are blessed, the blessings that come from God is still from the one that comes from the brain. It's different from the one that comes from the mind. Hallelujah. It's different. It's very different. I pray that you touch the blessings of God in the name of Jesus. You will know what it means for God to bless somebody. The Bible says, and God blessed Abraham. There is difference. So you can have billions more than me, sir. Hey, but you see the kind of prosperity I have. You can have it. It's different. The blessing of God, the Bible says, it, it makes rich, has no sorrow. Yeah. Uh, that, that the way he told the story of um, a, a man that came to tell him, he said, see, I have 13 houses where I can sleep in. He said, but sir, I cannot sleep. And he said, daddy, please, I don't mind giving you all my 13 houses. Just pray for me that I will be able to sleep. <laughs> my father said, no, 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 no. Please, keep your, keep your problems, keep your 13 houses. About your sleeping, I will pray to God about it and you will be able to sleep. A lot of people have a lot of, a lot of money, they don't have peace of mind. They can't sleep. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And even if you have all the wealth of, in this life, you will die and leave them behind. And I love what Solomon said. Solomon said, how will you know if the, the son you want, the children you want to give, how will you know if they, they even give it well? Bill Gates said when he dies, he's going to give only his children, I think, 2% of his wealth. The remaining will be given to charity. And so what? And so what? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. So you see, there is a blessing that comes from God. It's different from the blessing that comes from hard work. It's different. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let's take one more scripture and then we'll pray. Ephesians 4, verse 28, the Bible says, Let him that stole steal no more. Rather, let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. I'll read that again. See, there is somebody here that is stealing. Eh? Say, so tell him not to steal again. So, but let him walk, let him walk with his hands. Why should he walk with his hands? Humanly speaking, you would think so that he will not steal again, so that he will be able to eat and not steal. But see what Paul said. So, but let him walk with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that have need. So, the purpose of him walking is not to enrich himself. So you see, he is going to work now. He's a ministry. The goal at the back of his mind now is not to enrich himself, but is to have enough so that he can give to those that have need. Can you see that now? When you have this kind of mindset, each time you go to work now, you are not going to work for your belly. You are, you are going to work is also a ministry. That the pastor that prepares a sermon and preaches on Sunday, and you that put on your tie, put on your shirt, or, uh, or put on your helmet and go to the sides to walk. What of you are doing ministry, sir? Because when you get paid from that money, you say, God, I made this money for you. What do we do with it? Hi. God, I have been paid. What do we do with it? It's your money. It's not mine. I went to do this work for you. Then God said, God, go, keep on spending. Don't worry, when I need it, I will tell you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Then a few days later, God sent somebody. Yeah, go and tell him that, that guy needs urgent 2K. That one is sick. I will send him to you now. You know, for years, I maintained a standard. Today, I still keep it. A standard that 
no matter what, if anybody comes to me for, to ask for a need, I will give. I maintain that for years. I may not be able to give you all you ask, but I will always shake my body and I try to give you something. Because I, because I will pray in the money. One of my prayer points in the money is, Father, the people you want me to bless today, send them to me. Many of you are pray, praying the exact opposite. I'm telling you a lot about myself, not because I want you to think I'm a big man or I'm a spiritual person or godly person, but I want you to see that if I can live like this, you can live like that too. Hallelujah. I will pray, God, the people you want me to bless today, send them to me. So during the day, and I'll tell, you, tell God, God, the people you don't want me to bless, they should not come. They should not have the burden to ask. But those ones that we ask, let them be those that you want me to bless. They, when they come, I say, you are welcome. I know God sent you. How much do you say you need? Hallelujah. You can live like that. When you live to be a blessing, hi, there is a joy that comes with it. There is a peace that comes with it. There is a fulfillment that comes with it. There's no money in this world can replace in your heart. God, a person in the name of Jesus. So God willing, next week, I will talk about now the practical means. This is the faith I've spoken to you. How to live by faith. Um, how to live by faith and enjoy a life of abundance. Now, sorry, let me just quickly read. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 8. I'll just read the preceding verse so that you see that Paul was speaking to give us in that text. Okay. From verse 6, it says, But those who sow sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And those that sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. <laughs> that ye, always having sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. Verse 9, as it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, yet he has given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers sees to the sower, both ministers bread for your food. And it went on and on and on and on and on. I can teach you about that separately. How God gives bread to the eaters and food and seed to the sowers. We are the person in the name of Jesus. So next week, by God's grace, I will show you practical means, godly wisdom. I have about 10 to 12 of them. We are will share with you practical ways. Apart from using faith, there are practical wisdom in God's word that you, that you will need to live a life of abundance. No matter your level of income, sir. No matter how much you are paid monthly, no matter the nature of your work, you can enjoy abundance. And I pray that God will bring you all into it in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Can you begin to speak to God wherever you are? Just speak to Him. Thank Him for His word that you have received. Say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for speaking to us expressly. Thank you for the entrance of your word. Thank you for shining your light upon our lives. I begin to decrease I work in abundance. I am repositioned into abundance. In the name of Jesus. I move out of the life of penury. I stop, I stop living from, from, from ends to mouth. I start living in abundance. I start picking from abundance. I start enjoying from abundance. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anyone under the sound of my voice who is plagued by the devil, say the hand of the devil is on your finance. I decree. Satan, take your hands off in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Everyone who is looking up to man, you are looking up to man to miss your name. I decree. May God show you mercy in the name of Jesus. And may he open a door for you where you least expect in the name of Jesus. That's a word to somebody. God said, the reason I've been unable to reach you with my blessings is because you are looking up to man. He says, look up to me and you see how much I can give to you. The Bible says, blessed be the Lord who daily loves us benefit. The reason why the loss of benefits is not get to you is because you are looking up to man, not up to God. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Father, we thank you for your word that we have received. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for blessing us. 
the grace for everyone on the sound of my voice to live as I live, <laughs> enjoy abundance, the grace you gave to me, the understanding, the revelation that all these years, almost a decade now, that I have been living abundantly. Lord, I pray, grant them in the name of Jesus. Irrespective of their income, irrespective of their level, help them to live in peace, in joy, in abundance, in health, in wealth, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. The joy of givers, the joy of being a blessing, may they know it. May they touch it. May they see it. May they behold it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. I pray for that person who is trusting God for a job. Receive your miracle job in the name of Jesus. I pray concerning all of you and all your businesses. I decree by the, by the power of God, favor in your businesses in the name of Jesus. That person that is trying to sell a property that it has been looking impossible to sell. Before the end of this week, you get the call. And you say that property in the name of Jesus. I command the devil to take his hands of that property. Every power of the devil withholding those God has ordained to buy it. I come against those power right now in the name of Jesus. You say that property before the end of next week in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. It's meant to be a single teaching. But because of time and the flow of the Spirit, we will not finish. Next week, by God's grace, we'll take it up from here. Tell you the practical aspects. And I pray that God will bless you tremendously in the name of Jesus. Um, our New Testament Bible reading is out for January. Do well to join us. Uh, start your year reading the Word of God and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and studying. It's a good way to start the year. Uh, get the link. you find the link on our, on our, on our platforms uh, so that you can be a part of what God is doing uh, in this year's ministry. And I pray that God will bless you tremendously in the name of Jesus. Have a wonderful weekend ahead. And God bless you. Shalom. Hallelujah. We believe you have been blessed by this wonderful teaching. Other SGS teachings are available on our YouTube channel. Kindly do well to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification icon in order to receive updates about our SGS teachings. You can also drop your comments and questions after the broadcast. We also have the compressed audio version of this teaching and other teachings on our Telegram platform. Join us again next week for another round of Encounter with God. Remain blessed. Shalom.